Welcome to Elam Restoration Ministries. My name is Pastor Rowe, I'm the pastor here at Elam, and it is small group time. Amen. Well, I'm I'm sure you guys have already prayed. I'm sure you guys have already uh, introduced yourself. Um, so I and I'm sure you guys have already answered your icebreaker question. So I'm going to answer it personally myself. I like mild um, and. The reason why is because spicy things, as I get older, just doesn't agree with me. Um, the hottest thing I've ever had, um, I remember one of my um, family members had brought over a, um, from the Philippines, this thing called lime, and it's, in essence, it's it's like collard greens, but in cream, in that cream sauce, which is made out of coconut milk, has uh, these little tiny hot, hot, they're not jalapenos, I don't even know what that kind of peppers in it. And I remember it being very, very spicy. Um, so anyway, that's one thing that I've had that was spicy. Um, I used to love things extremely hot and spicy, but as I'm getting older, it's uh, getting some effects from it that, uh, let's just say, does not come out the right way. So, amen. <laughs> All right, well, to God be the glory. Um, we are still in Galatians chapter 5. I, we have had some great studies about this. I'm excited about this one. So I'm going to read the text to you. We're starting with Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and we're reading through 23. And it starts this way. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in, the, in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law today we'll be discussing three of these works of the flesh and we're discussing one fruit of the spirit the first one we're going to talk about is contentions contentions um, in the new testament um, or i should say in the king james version is actually called variance a variance it, in the Greek word is eris, which is used in a political context to describe political parties that different in platforms and agendas. This type of contention has been around since the inception of the Senate during the emperor times. Typically, the Senate represented the people versus the emperor who represented his own self-interest. Um, we see that these types of contentions today in political parties and political races that we experience every couple of years, right? We're about to experience one next year, 2024. Uh, the nature of these contentions is that people that represent the same platform, this is what the contention means, say the people, for example, typically have different agendas. The very same that are vying for the position of emperor or president, they can be all from the same party, but are vastly different in goals and ideals. Um, this particular type of work of the flesh was spoken by Paul to the churches of Galatia because Paul started to see 
that as the church continued to expand, each and every person started to have different ideas about a goal or or something that they had for the church. Um, we, you know, with God, I just in, in what end up happening is that somebody might want to focus on this area of ministry while this person wants to focus on this area of ministry and what they want to do is that whatever it is that they are that that they have the greater uh what whatever it is that they they view as more important their goal is to push that into the forefront to get resolved and making sure that that particular thing is is what gets put on the agenda um, rather than another person's thoughts and ideas. And um, we talked in the last small group uh, about peace and peace is meant to be pursued. So uh, meaning if you're pursuing your if you're pursuing your point, if you're pushing for your point, then that means you're no longer pushing peace or pursuing peace. You can't be in a position to push for your point and pursue peace at the same time, right? So now you're developed yourself into contention with some other some other person, or maybe even against the pastor or against against somebody that is in leadership. Okay. The next one we'll dis- we'll discuss today is jealousy or emulation. The Greek word for this is zealous. Zealous. Funny thing is, in the Philippines, the word um, uh, in the Philippine language, the word for jealousy is celos, which is not spelled with a Z, obviously. It's celos. And it's also the span which we got it from the Spanish. And the Spanish actually, Spanish word for for jealousy is actually uh, celoso or celos. All the same thing. Um, but in the new, te- in, in, in the King James, uh, jealousy in the New King James, it's jealousy in the King James is called emulations. Um, jealousy emulation is the result of what happened when someone else is just talking about if you're in contention with somebody or if you're with heiress with somebody, that if your particular idea or your particular um, uh, goal isn't what is used or what isn't what's been put in the forefront or had been prioritized, then jealousy is the, re- the result of the feeling you feel towards the other person whose idea got picked or whose, whose issues have been put on the agenda or, or has been prioritized over yours. And a very good example of this is when you're in a team of highly talented individuals and you're trying to resolve a problem or trying to come up with the same goal and somehow you 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 come up with a very, very good suggestion and, and someone comes up with an even better or even a great suggestion and then they pick your theirs instead of yours and, and you end up having to have, you're now uh, upset, not just because not because of the fact that the problem might get resolved, which is what you were there for, but the fact that you are more focused on the fact that your idea was not the one that was chosen. That's zealous, meaning you're offended about not getting recognized that you've directed all of your energy and attention into disqualifying that person's idea. Where zealous is actually also where we got the word zeal from, which is the negative, the negative uh, uh, part of zeal. You know, you know, people that have a zeal for life, they have all the energy and the the momentum and the the uh, you know the uh, you know just this whole entire pursuit for 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 good things. That's the zeal for life. This is the exact opposite zealous this is is the anti zeal it's amazing meaning you're focused and putting all of your energy to destroy somebody else's idea right and so that is exactly what jealousy is it's it's almost like a 
chain of events. If you're in contention with somebody and then and then your your idea doesn't get get chosen and then now you have this feeling of jealousy that kind of turns in if you are if you are in contention or or uh, uh, um, variance heiress and then now you're in jealousy and and you're in emulations or zealous you know that's that's the feeling that you feel the next step the next thing that um, um, that happens is the next word that we're going to talk about is outburst of wrath or wrath. The Greek word for this is thumos, which is a picture of literally someone boiling over in anger over something. Words associated with this is tumult, tumultuous, or even the Greek word thermos, which means hot. As Eris's contention about putting your self-interest into the forefront of everyone's mind that turns into zealous or jealousy emulation when, you're, when your interest or your self-interest is not what was prioritized, wrath will be the action you take from the feeling of jealousy when what you've said and how you've contended wasn't enough and how you've discredited and destroyed and invalidate someone and their character when, when all of those things the, the feeling of just discrediting him, disqualifying just is not enough that you will want to absolutely kill and destroy them. That is wrath. That is uh, out, outbursts of wrath. Contention, variance, jealousy, emu emulation, outburst of wrath or wrath, or I should say eris, zealous, and thumos are all connected in a chain effect of insecurity based on what you think. Today I would like to give you a solution. An alternative that is that is that then going down this path. As you can see this particular path the works of the flesh this causes you not to inherit the kingdom of God. You could be in church and continue to be in church and doing things for church, but even if you if you if you are somehow deceived and got into these contentions that turn into jealousy and then ends up having to be at wrath, you are still a candidate for not inheriting the kingdom of God. So what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to give you another path. This path will lead you to the kingdom of God, and that is long suffering, which is, um, a, you know, which is a fruit of the spirit, right? Um, long suffering in, 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 in the Greek, me is actually makrothumos. Oh, I know that word thumos sounds familiar. We just talked about that. It was like wrath, Pastor. I, I'm gonna explain. When you put macro and thumos together, macro, by the way, means long, right? So to this very, very day, actually, there was a definition that was kind of corny. They said that that's where they got the word macaroni from because macaroni is made very, very long before it gets actually cut. But another one that I thought that you might wanna look into is macro is now a, tech, a, a, a technical term or a technology term that means expanding, always continuing to expand, okay? Um, and as you know, the two most is referred to boiling, what when you put these words together, or I should say hot, when you put these words together, it pictures a long wick candle that burns constantly and consistently through day and night, hot or cold. It will patiently and continually last through every type of condition that it is exposed to. A very good application of this is found in Colossians chapter three, verse 12 and 13. Look at this. We've talked about this in the past, but this is what it says. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has complained against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. In a past small group, we've discussed this scripture. We've actually talked about the word elect and um, that word elect meaning chosen, valued, handpicked, and important. The other thing worth noting in this verse is that 
Paul tells us to put on long suffering, meaning to wear or, 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 or to make it a part of who you are. You see, as God, as people of God, we have a direct responsibility responsibility to be the visible representation of Jesus Christ, meaning that we we do chase after peace. We don't push our agenda. Because when you push our agenda, it turns into contentions and contentions lead to jealousy. And now I'm, I, am, I am snowballed into to jealousy and then to wrath. But instead, I'm going to turn around, pursue after peace, and I will put on long suffering, right? Because what I'm trying to explain to you is, is this, okay? I do this because it's not about what I think and feel. I will not be insecure because if I focus on what didn't happen for me, I lose sight of how God sees me. And God sees me as an elect. I'm talking a chosen one. I'm talking somebody precious, valued, I am an important person into God's eyes that he sent his only begotten son. Then when his son came here, firmly made a decision to die on the cross because I am somebody worthy. And that's important. Why would I be insecure about, about somebody else's notion of solution? And I'm going to tell you this. If I put on macrothumos, which is long suffering, then what I'm when I pursue peace, when I'm I'm coming after it, putting on long suffering, I'm putting myself in the path where God is. I'm putting God into the situation, which we lose sight of the actual reason why we're all in this is to find the solution, so whatever that is. That is the solution. Instead, I will celebrate and make my goal the solution not to think not what i think I, i'm placing god in this situation if god is in this situation the solution will come everybody will be happy i'm gonna celebrate i'm I, I, i'm gonna celebrate what god thinks of me you know what how he sees me not what what they didn't see of my idea that makes absolute zero sense so i'm gonna pursue peace I'm going to, um, I'm going to put on long suffering macrothumos. I will not be subject to eres, zelos, and thumos, contentions, variance, jealousy, uh, emulations, wrath, and out outbursts of wrath. None of those things will be what, what pulls me into the place where I do not inherit the kingdom of God. But instead. I'm gonna pursue peace and I'll put on my long suffering. Because in this way, it's not about me, it's not about my ideas. It's about getting things done and coming up with a solution. That's what's more important. And on top of that, even if they didn't pick my idea, even if my ideals wasn't prioritized, because I prioritize God, I put God into this place and the solution will come just because God is in it. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for taking this time to be with us. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, this Sunday, I want you to come to church. Very, very exciting time. This Sunday is our flannel day, which means everybody who comes to church will be wearing flannel shirts. I think the temperature, I'm, I'm almost sure, the temperature is about to drop by Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. So it's just in time for us to wear our flannels. We're going to have, we're going to take pictures. We're going to post on our social media. You know, whoever has the, you know, the coolest flannel outfits will be featured in our social media account. Um, actually everybody will be featured, but it just be cool, you know, just to, to be all united to do the same thing. Amen. Um, and also this coming Sunday starts our 21 day fast. And I want you to fast I want you to join us in this fast. In this fast, we typically seek God for what God wants us to do and with things that we need from him before the turn of the year, okay? This is where God meets us. 21-day fast, we, 
we, we fast for 12 hours. You pick which 12 hours you do. For example, myself, I, fa I typically fast somewhere between six or seven o'clock at night to seven o'clock the next morning. In that, sp in that span of that 12 hours, I, you know, I eat my dinner before that because in that, that 12 hours, there will be no food, there will be no social media, there will be uh, uh, no talking on the phone or nothing like that. It will be dedicated, no, I mean, no television. It'll be dedicated into reading, studying, praying, um, all of those things that I will just be completely dedicated to God. And then when my 12 hours is over, then I go and, you know, have, uh, you know, eat breakfast or whatever, uh, have my coffee, that kind of deal. Now, if you want to challenge yourself even greater, I suggest that you do it during the day. Find the 12 hours during the day, do it, okay? And if you want to take your, your challenge even greater than that, and I just want to tell you the greater the challenge, the greater the purpose, the greater the answers, right? And I will be completely up to you. Make it longer than 12 hours, whichever way you want to do. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you this coming Sunday. I love you. I miss you. And remember, Jesus is.